Hello, welcome back to the A to Z of archaeology. Today is the letter L, and L stands for landscape archaeology. Now, landscape archaeology is extremely important because it helps us to understand a site in the context of the world around it. Understanding context is extremely important. For example, if you want to understand what a book is about, reading a single word probably won't help you. It is only by understanding where that word is within a sentence, and in turn within the whole story, that we begin to gain a deeper understanding of its context. This is the same when it comes to an archaeological site. So, just as with the written word, uh, context is extremely important. There we saw that the word bear uh, changed its meaning and its implications with uh, each successive word in that sentence. And um, it's exa it is exactly the same for an archaeological site. Without uh, an understanding of where the site is in the landscape, we simply cannot fully grasp its context and its significance. Now, the techniques used for, for measuring these different relationships uh, do vary. Landscape archaeology often begins with desk-based research, poring over maps and place names to find where sites may be. This may then be followed by a program of field walking, by carefully gathering scatters of objects from the surface of the ground, such as pottery, and logging them on a map, we gain a better understanding of where exactly a site is likely to be located, for example in a field. Occasionally survey work may be undertaken in order to even more accurately measure a site, and sometimes a lucky archaeologist may get the grandest view of all by going up in a plane. Here, for example, a whole town has been identified just by getting a new perspective on the site from above. Eventually, all of this data can be logged and gathered together in a Geographical Information Systems program. So, uh, as with most things in archaeology, uh, I'm sure you've, you've uh, learned a bit of this by now, um, interpretation is the key issue and sometimes a bit of a stumbling block. Arguably, William Stukeley was one of the first to try and place monuments into the context of their landscape. Here, for example, he logged the entire landscape of the Avery Henge complex. However, in the 1960s and 70s, archaeologists like Lewis Binford no longer wanted to simply record the landscape, they wanted to explain it. It was thought that by measuring the landscape and adopting a logical approach, the whole landscape could be understood. And in this way, we could understand how people approached their environment in the past. However, this has been criticised for producing top-down, godlike views of the landscape, where every resource is known and every single crag is mapped. Archaeologists such as Christopher Tilley argued that this was an unrealistic way of viewing the landscape. Rather, the experience of the landscape was what mattered, and by being in the world around you, you are able to understand its significance to people in the past. Understanding the human perspective is of course vitally important, however it's extremely subjective and cannot be measured. Rather it is probably through a combination of these techniques that the landscape is being better understood as it was to people in the past. So different interpretive techniques in the landscape have been extremely useful when examining monuments in the landscape and probably uh, the most famous uh, example would have to be Stonehenge. The understanding of Stonehenge has benefited greatly from being put into the context of the landscape in which it was built. By doing this, we quickly see that this was not a standalone monument, but part of a vast complex in a ritual landscape. By analysing the number of monuments in the vicinity of Stonehenge, we're able to gain a deeper understanding of how Stonehenge figured in the lives and the views of the people who were using the landscape. By making note of the geology of Britain, we have been able to tie down the source material for much of Stonehenge. For example, the blue stones come from the Preseli Mountains in South Wales. This, and much more data, is being brought together in a project to try and understand the context of Stonehenge in the landscape. And recently, it's been suggested that the location of trees in the past would have affected how the monument could be seen and used. So this is a constant re-evaluation of the monument and its landscape. Ultimately, in the context of its landscape, Stonehenge is being revealed to be far more than just a collection of stones. It was a socially active, living monument. 
So landscape archaeology isn't just an optional extra. It is crucial if we want to properly understand uh, the meaning of a, of, an, of a site in its landscape. And we're not just talking about land, uh, landscapes which are country, countryside or countryfied. Um, often it, this can involve looking at the context of a factory in the broader cityscape or looking at how one house uh, is placed on a street of other houses. Uh, it's all about the, the relationship between the surroundings and the immediate vicinity of an archaeological site. So that has been L Landscape Archaeology and hopefully you found this video interesting and or useful. Please feel free to comment below. Alternatively send me a question or a message and I will get back to you as soon as is humanly possible. Um, naturally, if you uh, would like to, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm always willing uh, to to uh, to gather subscribers. Um, and uh, if you are even more interested, all you need to do is follow us on Facebook. So just type in Archeo Soup Productions and click the like. And uh, most things which can't quite fit into a video here end up on that page. So thank you very much.